Well, here's a question. Which job field has more workers in California than the state is actors, more employees in Texas than ranchers, and more workers across the entire United States than the entire coal industry? Yakenda McGehee reveals the answer in this report. The uh, economics of solar renewables, as a general matter, are more expensive for, than conventional power. Uh, but we're seeing that change even. Wind turbines are getting bigger and more efficient. So the price of solar has been coming down. Amid gloomy global economic reports that investment in clean energy dipped significantly in 2012, there are some bright spots. One in particular is the solar industry, where the outlook is much more favorable. In the solar space, uh, we're not seeing uh, a decrease in investment. We're actually seeing more investment. Much like the energy it harnesses, business for the solar sector is burning up. According to the National Solar Jobs Census, the solar industry supports nearly 120,000 jobs in America. That's an increase of about 13% in 2012. There are now more solar workers in America than coal workers. And there are more solar jobs in California than any other state, as California accounts for fully a third of the nation's solar employment. We've done over 40 megawatts of installs since 2007. 40 megawatts is a little over 10,000 homes. Perma City Solar is one of the California companies creating those jobs. It believes a decrease in solar prices, between 20 and 30 percent since 2011, according to economists, along with a shift in the ease and availability of solar system financing, is the reason for this shift in the industry's fortune. Really was an all cash type of business. So homeowners were kind of left in the cold, even though there was these rebates available, they still had to come up with, with some money. So now that has been removed and now you're seeing a lot of zero down solutions, uh, both on the loan side and on the lease side. Something economists at this week's Milken Institute's annual global conference called a real future game changer. Yakenda McGahee, CCTV, Los Angeles. Well, the sun is definitely shining down on sun power. The stock closed up more than 17% today, but it is fractionally down in after hours trading. The U.S. maker of solar panels posted a smaller than expected first quarter loss as revenue, and that's the key here, revenue rose 29% to $635 million, thanks to strong demand from solar projects in North America and from Japan. And for more on what's driving the demand for U.S. solar panels, we're joined by Gordon Johnson, Managing Director and Senior Equity Research Analyst for Axiom Capital, who covers alternative energy companies. Gordon, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me. So, Gordon, what's behind this big sales increase over at SunPower? Right, so it's not just SunPower. It's all the U.S. solar companies that have exposure to these large projects. And effectively what's happening is First Solar, SunPower, MEMC, they have these large projects that were effectively um, the PPAs, the power purchase agreements, were signed in 2008. And the reason why we see a little bit of risk around this is because we think these projects are one time in nature. What we mean is the power purchase agreements are based on natural gas prices, and they were struck in 2008 when natural gas prices were much higher than they are now. So now that they're recognizing revenue on these projects, it makes their earnings look much better than they will once they start recognizing on revenue on the newer projects. So we feel like this, this, this blip in earnings is one time in nature. So we will warn your, your viewers to be a little cautious around the continuation of this. Okay, so this is not actually a trend. This is a one time anomaly because as you say, natural gas prices have decreased from about what, $14 to $4 over that time exactly. period? Exactly. And oil prices have also drastically reduced right. since 2008. So with fossil fuels and natural gas not being as expensive, how is that going to affect the demand for solar power? I think it's going to decrease the demand uh, pretty significantly. And I also see risks further down the road with respect to the price that consumers in these areas are going to have to pay for electricity. Keep in mind, these projects that they're building, these massive projects, are being struck at you know, uh, electricity prices that are two, three, four times the price today. So the constituents in these regions where they're building these solar projects are going to have to pay these high prices. So I think there will be some uh, debate around this as these, uh, uh, as the electricity prices in these regions start to go up. So what is then the outlook for the solar panel industry? 
I think it's, uh, it's, it's actually not good. Um, you know, I, you guys talked about the job creation right. in the United States, and that, that is indeed the case. But here's the problem. Uh, there's billions of dollars of taxpayer subsidies that have been thrown at these solar projects. There's a lot of people, indeed, employed by the solar industry today, but that's a little deceiving because the problem is when these, panel, when these uh, solar parks are finished being built, all those workers, they're just temporary. All those workers are effectively going to be fired. And the key with solar is to keep the costs low. So to maintain these huge solar fields, it only requires 10 or 12 people. So you have, uh, you know, uh, First Solar, for instance, got an incentive of roughly a billion dollars, and the permanent jobs created were roughly 15 jobs. So I think once all of this get, all of this pans out, I think people are going to see that it's not uh, as advantageous as people are, 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 you know, assuming. So it looks like we're looking into the sun and not seeing things very clearly here. <laughs> and, and as you say about First Solar, just last month they acquired Japan-based Tetra Sun. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of acquisitions in the space. Right. Is this a trend that we're going to see continue with the big guys taking opportunity to swallow up the smaller players? Um, I, I don't think so because, you know, I think what th this, is an, this is an industry defined by structural oversupply. To your, to your last question, what's, what the problem is, you have about 60 gigawatts of capacity and you have about 25 to 30 gigawatts of demand. And the real issue is in China, there's a lot of Chinese solar players. The, the bulk of the supply comes from China. Uh, industry defined by oversupply, these companies are losing money. The companies should be going bankrupt, and instead of going bankrupt, the Chinese government is coming in and bailing them out. Like with the example of SunTech. Exactly. And we covered this last time that the Chinese government really created a lot of incentives and a lot of subsidies, mm -hmm. and now they've actually over flooded the market right. to, the own to their own detriment. Exactly. So to, to your point, SunTech, what, what's the impact of SunTech? So SunTech has effectively went bankrupt, but if you go visit SunTech's facility in China, they're still producing panels. Those workers are still employed. They went bankrupt, but it was effectively taken over by a state-owned entity, an SOE company, which is a government-backed company, so those workers would, would not get fired. You wouldn't have protests. So that supply continues to plague the market. So the, the Chinese companies are getting incentives from the standpoint of government debt, effectively via the banks. So instead of going bankrupt, they just keep, they're able to roll over their existing debt. But the U.S. companies are getting incentives by these taxpayer incentives in these large projects at these high prices. So you're not having a rationalization of capacity. Okay. So that's the problem in the industry. Okay. So thank you for clarifying those issues for us. Gordon Johnson, Managing Director and Senior Equity Research Analyst for Axiom Capital.